But I want to bring in to discuss right now Independent Women's Foreign Policy Director Hadley Heath Manning. And there's the question, should the government force these airlines to give passengers refunds? Man, tough questions. Airline executives, just like small business owners and individuals, are all trying to navigate really tough questions in the midst of the pandemic. And I think the answer lies not only in considering what is fair, but also in considering what incentives we're offering both the airlines and consumers on either side of this. So, for example, if you make it too easy for consumers to get refunds, regardless of the reason that they might cancel on a flight, then you're creating an incentive for consumers to book maybe several flights for one trip and cancel all but one at the last minute based on their preferences or the best price. On the other hand, if you make it so that it's too difficult for consumers to access refunds in the midst of a very uncertain pandemic environment, you might be creating an incentive for passengers who might feel there's a public health reason that they shouldn't travel. For example, if they feel that they have symptoms or even without symptoms that they've been exposed to some germs. We want to make it easy for people to back out on travel if it's what's best for public health and for well, their health. Well, then I think the onus is on the airlines then. Then they should do what they were advised to do, guided to do by the Department of Transportation, which they have not been doing. 25,000 complaints in two months. They normally get 1,500 complaints a month. And we're talking 25,000. And it's because they're not refunding money and they're the ones canceling the flights. So maybe it's to the airlines, at least for the next six months, in good faith to honor these passengers and uh, obviously their financial hardships. That way they avoid the DOT coming in and saying you have to do it. Because once the DOT, DOT says you have to do it, they, there could be basically no going back on that policy. It could be permanent. Exactly. And the consequences for airlines in that case, you know, I, I take them at their word that that would cause serious cash flow and even potential bankruptcy related issues because airlines have been one of the hardest hit industry. Now, that's not to say that they haven't received twenty five billion dollars in in federal relief funding through the CARES Act. But there there are some ways maybe that airlines could get around some of these public health concerns. For example, they're considering temperature checks at airports. Of course, they want the federal government to pay for that as well. So it's a really tricky balance trying to. To, to, to walk the line between what is a critical industry, certainly air travel is a critical industry, and our government has supported the airline industry many times through different uh, stimulus packages and bailouts, um, but now also facing real concerns on the consumer side. Those consumers who have paid money for airline tickets and they can't travel, they're asking, where is my money? I need a refund right. now. Well, to your point, you know, we reformed the TSA. We transformed the TSA, if you will, after 9-11. Maybe this is the next step in that evolution of that agency. We'll have to see. Hadley, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you.